Well, here it is, the middle of summer in Minnesota, and uh, weather's beautiful, highs in the 70s, and like I usually say about northern Minnesota, it's uh, six months of ideal weather and six months of endurance, and well, we're in the ideal weather section of it right now. Um, been doing a lot of fishing and uh, just enjoying the summer. Uh, been thinking a lot about hunting also. Uh, a little bit about deer hunting, mostly about bear hunting. Uh, the been working hard to get ready for the bear season here in Minnesota, but I've also been thinking a lot about hunting in Michigan. And if you have uh, watched this channel, maybe followed me on Facebook or whatever, then you know that I drew a Michigan bear tag this year, and I'm very excited about going. And I'm also very excited that you're riding shotgun with me and I'm going to video the process of going out there and scouting the properties and putting out the baits and uh, and the hunting and so forth. Um, so I'm getting ready to take off right now on just sort of a whirlwind tour of the west end of the UP of Michigan. Now I'm going to be traveling really light. I'm just going to be camping, uh, kind of rough camping wherever I can find a spot. Uh, just be eating like freeze-dried meals where you boil water and dump in there. I make a lot of my own freeze-dried meals. Um, also got some store-bought ones. And uh, probably spend two days out there is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping to get it all done in two days anyway. And look over these areas and uh, try to get a real feel for what the best spots are going to be. And I'll help you through the process. So if you ever do this, you know, you can hopefully learn something from the way I do it, and it should be really fun for you. Uh, it's about uh, where I'm going to start looking for spots. It's about four and a half hours from home. And uh, so I'm going to scout out some spots here. This time of the year, I'm going to actually pick out three or four bait sites where I'm actually going to hunt and uh, get ready to hunt but I won't be uh, actually baiting and hunting until about the middle of September when I'm done with my hunters here in Minnesota. Uh, my plan is to have everything ready to go so when I go out there I can just start baiting right away. Um, do it just like I do anywhere else where I'm using gold rush, I'm putting out the baits, I'm using the sprays and so forth. And then uh, I'm going to just sit back and watch until a bait gets hit. So I've seen this pattern develop that I've learned to take advantage of. And that is how when a bear first finds the bait, he hits it really regularly for the first couple of days. Um, he'll hit maybe every six to eight hours, morning, noon, night. Uh, every, you know, just constantly he'll be right in that area and he'll be hitting that bait. And then he'll sort of settle into a routine. And that routine could be nocturnal or it could be the last moments of daylight or whatever. But there's a tremendous window of opportunity to shoot the bear in the first 24 to 48 hours after he finds the bait. And so when I'm going on this road trip to Michigan, that's my plan, is when a bear hits the bait and he finds the bait, I'm just going to hang and hunt right away as soon as I find a bear on the trail camera. So... Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of research, and uh, I put kind of put the word out both on YouTube and on Facebook that I'm going to be hunting in the uh, Berglund unit, the far western end of the UP. And I've been contacted by quite a few people. I think six or seven have um, contacted me and said, you know, they want to help, or you know, they have some information, or maybe you know, even they want to camp with me or hunt with me or whatever. And I haven't really followed up on any of that. I don't want to get um, in a situation where I'm part of a party or something like that or a group or anything like that. I just like to do this myself. One guy even has said he's, his wife has a tag and he's got some property. And if I want, I can come and hunt his bait when his wife is done, uh, which is really nice. Um, that's kind of in my back pocket. I would be surprised if I end up using that, but um, you know, it's it's a very generous offer, and I uh, appreciate his willingness to offer me that. Now, another guy uh, that called me up and gave me some pretty specific good information about some of the areas, and it 
it just happened to be an area where I was really, really looking at. Well, I'll put it this way. I chose the Berglund unit because of this area of the Berglund unit, which just really, really looks good sort of on paper, I guess you'd say. Like, you know, if you look at Google Earth and Base Map and Onyx or whatever, sometimes there's places that just jump out at you and you go, wow, that's really good bear country. Well, he told me that he's really familiar with that specific country, so I've had a couple phone conversations with him. And I'm not going to give any more information about it than that, but uh, he kind of confirmed um, some of the things I suspect, suspected about uh, that area. And, um, you know, we talked a little bit about access and getting in and out of there and stuff like that. And um, when I go here, I'm going to be taking an ATV. I'm taking a four-wheeler with me. I don't know how much I'll be able to use it. Uh, National Forest properties you really can't use a four-wheeler unless there's a designated four-wheeler trail um, there are some areas where you can use a four-wheeler so I'm gonna take it with me this first trip and uh, I don't know how much I'll end up being able to use it or not but um, you know I've talked to him quite a bit about the access and and uh, really about where the areas are that the dog hunters tend to concentrate on which was pretty helpful and uh, some I haven't hunted around dog hunters that much, but I do know some specific things about hound hunting. Like dog hunters don't like to hunt close to major highways, of course, because um, they don't want their dog to run across the road and get hit by a car. Um, they also don't like to hunt areas where their dog could just get way too far away from them so they tend to hunt areas where they have good forest roads that they can go and go around to another area and cut the dogs off or try to get closer to walk in on where a bear is treated or whatever. So I kind of know what to look for in areas what dog hunters would like um, but I haven't hunted around dog hunters that much and so I'm, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot about that and uh, I'll, I'll I'll fill you in as I kind of figure things out. So my scouting has been online so far. I've been looking at specific areas that just look good. They look like they have an access point where I can get to them. And then I just drop a pin. Um, I also use the kind of old school like uh, the uh, Delorme Atlas. And that, whoops, that's, um, you know, something I use to find out where a campground is. and and uh, where some of the forest roads are and so forth. But mostly this is online scouting and then I'm just going to go out there and uh, get boots on the ground, walk through the woods, uh, you know, drive the, the roads and trails and, and try to look at some of these areas where I've actually dropped pins and, and, and hopefully pick a specific spot where I'm going to put a bait in a tree where I can put a tree stand and, uh, and all that. So that's what uh, is coming up here over the next uh, uh, probably probably the end of next week or something I'll probably have that first video done I guess this is the first one that'll be the second one I really want to thank you for following along and being a part of this and and uh, hit the bell so you get a notification uh, when I put a video up and there'll be these two videos this summer and then after the Minnesota bear hunt and I'll be doing a full vlog on the Minnesota bear hunt with all the hunters that are in camp again and then after that then I'll I'll head to Michigan and uh, it should be a really fun experience it should be a learning experience I love learning new things and hunting bears in new areas my first time in Michigan so we'll see you on the next video settled into my camp spot here on the shores of Lake Gogebic. Um, not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but uh, that's where I'm going to camp here for the next couple nights. 
and uh, as you can see it's a really pretty spot and I have got bear country to the north of me and bear country to the south of me and bear country to the east and to the west so we got plenty of bear country around here in fact I feel like I'm in bear country right in my camping spot right here so my it's about noon here and my plan is to uh, I'm gonna go north first and what I've done is I have checked off um, several spots that look really good to me on Google Earth and on base map on X or whatever app you like to use and I've dropped some pins on six spots and my goal for the next couple days is to look at those six spots in person and actually walk right in and uh, see exactly what they look like there's forest roads that I'm not sure if I can use a ATV or if I can get a truck down them or if they're gated off or whatever, you know, so I really um, Just have to go look at them in person and see how to access those areas It's very likely that a couple of the places that I have uh, Dropped pins uh, that I can't even get to um, You just never know until you get there. So th that's kind of the fun part of this uh, basically a process of elimination and really trying to find the exact right spot that I'm gonna put a bait down. And uh, it's very exciting for me. I like this type of thing. I like going to new places and kind of getting it figured out and finding those spots and then eventually kill a bear on those spots. And so by the time the next couple days are over, I should hopefully have uh, probably three spots that I'll just get ready for actually dropping the bait. So when I come back in September, I can just put out baits and cameras and just start hunting. So this should be fun. I really love this and I really love the fact that you're along to share it with me and uh, um, we'll just got to get changed here and get ready to go in the bush and uh, get my boots on and hopefully we'll uh, find a couple of good spots today and then tomorrow morning again. Here we go. Well, I'm about to dive in the woods here. The bugs are horrible. I have found a tremendous looking spot right here. I just started driving down this uh, Forest Service road and I came to an area where there's several lakes and beaver ponds, swampy looking streams, and just amazing looking bear habitat right here. So I parked my truck along the side of the road here. I don't even need the ATV right here. Head out into the woods here 50 to 100 yards find a good tree for a tree stand, mark it with my mapping app, and uh, uh, find a spot for a bait. This, I mean, I am right in the middle of some really terrific looking bear habitat right here. So, <laughs> this happened fast. Okay, I like what I found right here. I think that's going to be my stand tree. Right back there. See if I can dare. Those, those group of trees right there will be good to block my profile and give me some background cover. And then I'm going to put the bait right here on that triple tree right there. So I'm looking at a, about an 18 yard shot. And down in there is swamp. As you can, you can see all the ferns that lead down into a swamp. And then there's a beaver pond right over there, about 50, maybe 75 yards or so. And I'm only about 100 yards off the road. So, should be pretty good right in here. I like the looks of it. I'm going to go ahead and drop a pin here and then cut some logs. Um, <clears throat> in Michigan, you can't use a barrel, um, but I like to use logs to cover up my bait. So I've got plenty of dead wood around here that I can just cut dead logs to throw over the bait and I'll have everything ready. I got uh, everything I need right here. Got a great stand tree. Got a great place to put the bait. Got a tree just the right distance apart to put a trail camera on it. <clears throat> I'm on kind of a ridge that drops off on both sides. So I'll have good scent distribution in the evening as the thermals go downhill. They'll drop down to where bears could be moving through. So anyway, I'm, I like the looks of this really, really good. And uh, I could absolutely kill a bear right here.
I'm gonna say that is a definite no. We got a swamp right there. And we got swampy looking ground right there. Whoops. Switch my wiper blades on. I think we're gonna turn around and go back. Alright, we are looking for spot number two. There's a beaver flowage right there. That's backed up a lot of water. And uh, it's 5.30, so I covered a lot of ground this afternoon. But I think I got a spot here. I just need to find the right tree. Yeah, it's uh, over four hours since I had the last bait. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the looks of this area right here. Let's see what we can find. So we got a lot of low wet ground, cool, down in there. Got enough big trees up in here. Should be able to find one that'll be a good one for a tree stand. And then we just need another spot 15 to 20 yards away to drop in the bait. But we're close here. Let me just walk around, see what we got. Okay, there's my stand tree right there, nice straight one. And we got a nice open gap right down here. And right at the base of that double tree right there would be a good spot for the bait. You know, we're looking at right at 18 yards probably, which is my favorite number. So I just got to cut up some logs, mark this on the GPS. We'll get her marked and uh, it feels good. It looks really good down in here. Another thing that I like about this bait is that you got all that wet boggy ground down there with the beaver pond and the stand is that way and the bears would come from that way so they don't have to go by your stand. All right that's enough logs. To make a crib out of. It looks really good. This whole thing has a really good feel to it. So all right. Start working my way back towards camp. Alright, back in the truck, rehydrating. <clears throat> And uh, the GPS says that bait is 98 yards from this forest road where I walked in there. So that's about right. It's not too far to carry buckets of bait and stands and things like that, but far enough away that, uh, you know, bears won't be bothered by anybody that happens to go down this road, even though that's pretty unlikely while you're sitting there. So anyway, it's getting close to six o'clock I've got a couple more spots I just want to drive through and look at uh, before I head back to camp here so I'll see you back at camp My venison stew stew here for about 10-15 minutes and uh, I, I like these uh, freeze-dried meals I, it's fun to make your own uh, freeze dryer is a pretty big investment but uh, man I've made a lot of freeze-dried food and different things like these meals to eat while I'm camping like this but also just stuff to store and 
uh, berries and fruits and um, meats and all kinds of stuff. I've done a ton of it and it sure is handy for when you're just kind of camping light like this. So anyway, I feel like today was a pretty good day. I spent about seven hours out there in the woods and uh, found two really good spots, I think. They feel really good and uh, got them marked and ready to go. And um, So tomorrow I'm going to go south. I've also got a pin to the west of me that I'm going to go look at. And uh, so I got just those two more that I want to look at. And uh, I might do them both or... Um, you know, I might uh, not find anything at either of them. I don't know. But uh, at any rate, um, I soaked myself down pretty good with mosquito spray. So uh, fortunately, this campground has a shower building. And I'll be able to take a shower before I hit the sack here after I get some dinner in me. But anyway, very tired and uh, thirsty. Trying to get rehydrated. I sweat quite a bit, but... Uh, I uh, feel really good about today, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. Well, it's 6 o'clock here, just breaking daylight, and uh, you can start to see the sunshine starting to come across the lake there. The mosquitoes are horrible this morning. And uh, breakfast is just about ready. This morning it is breakfast scramble. Um, I put ham, bacon, scrambled eggs, cheese, and sausage in here. And then I just add boiling water to it. I've changed my mind. I'm going to uh, go back north. There's a couple more spots I just want to check out uh, up there. It just uh, really intrigues me, the look of the land and stuff. So I'm going to start out, run up there, check out a couple spots right away this morning, and then uh, hook up the four-wheeler and go down south to a couple places where I've dropped some pins down there. And uh, probably not even, probably try to head home sometime uh, late this afternoon. So anyway, let's hit the woods as soon as we get this breakfast in us. What I've got here is a pretty good looking area. This hill here, you can't really tell the lay of the land on video, but this drops down into a creek and I'm on a bit of a ridge right here. I could drive, I think my truck is probably 150 yards and I'm on uh, national forest land so I can't use an ATV so everything's got to be carried in here. But this all has a pretty good look to it. And uh, I'm really huffing and puffing because I just hoofed it up this ridge. But uh, I think this is kind of what I'm looking for here. I'm going to find the right tree and, uh, and get something set up here. I think this is worth uh, dropping a pin here and getting a site ready. So uh, just... it. I mean, you really can't have too many spots to to uh, try. All right, I've been bopping around in here for about 10 minutes or more. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to find exactly the way you like it, exactly what you want. But this is my stand tree right here and right down here is a, just a clear enough shooting path to put a bait right down in that area. And then the creek is just beyond it there. So I'm a little bit, I'm probably 200 yards from the truck which is kind of a lot farther than I would um, normally like to be. But 
this is the right spot so that's what we're going with well here's an interesting development there is a very clear ATV trail crossing the road right here and I don't have any cell service right here so this I, I, I didn't know uh, about this because uh, obviously I can't use my mapping app right here but then also this road is open to ATV use from here on so it uh, kind of changes my strategy here I have to kind of rethink this all right uh, got three done and um, <clears throat> stopped in town got some gas and uh, the girl behind the counter at the gas station informed me that it's not Lake Gogebic and it's not Lake Gogebic it is Lake Gogebic so at least now we know that I uh, also learned uh, from someone that there are a couple of guides that operate um, in that large uh, forested area west of the lake where I've got a couple pins dropped and so I think I'm gonna um, for now anyway I'm, I'm not gonna go uh, and and look those areas over I do got a couple spots way to the south of uh, Berglund area and so I'm gonna go check those out probably won't film at all I know this is starting to get kind of long so I got the four-wheeler hooked up and I'm um, headed um, to the south part of this area grab my stuff all from the campsite and then uh, probably um, do some four-wheeling and look some areas over and then uh, hit the road towards home well I I think this video is probably getting kind of long and uh, I've, I've worked hard for uh, two days here so it's time to wrap it up I'm at Bobcat Lake here now and uh, it's getting late on day two and I'm gonna head home get home late it's um, about probably five and a half hours from home so it's gonna be really late but I covered a lot of ground today spent some time on the four-wheeler as you saw um, I've got five spots marked I probably will not use all five you know hoping to just use two or maybe three at the most but uh, uh, I found some good stuff and man, I, I covered ground all the way from Lake Superior to uh, right now I'm almost on the Wisconsin border. So um, I, I, I saw a lot of cool country, saw a lot of good bear habitat and stuff like that. But uh, um, I think I've, you know, I've got five spots that are pretty good. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in the change house here and see if I can change for, hopefully for the better. Um, actually, I'm just going to get my work boots and all this uh, stuff that smells like mosquito dope off and get changed and uh, uh, hit the road, fill up with gas and uh, head back home. So thanks for watching this and uh, middle of September, there'll be lots more action up in this country and um, uh, I feel pretty good about the bait sites I got out. So hopefully we'll be showing you some trail camera pictures of bear and hopefully uh, skinning one. So thanks for being a part of this and we'll see you on the next video. And I am ready to hit the road because Michigan's second season bear hunt opens tomorrow and I got a tag. 
So I'm taking my, this truck with this trailer and uh, I'll show you. I got her all loaded up. Got a wheeler in there. So I'm packed to the brim. My wife is taking home the red truck and I'm just leaving right from here. She's taking home that truck and that four-wheeler and that trailer, all of which are going to, not all of which, the four-wheeler and the trailer is going to go up for sale. I just bought another side-by-side, -side, so I've got to sell two four-wheelers, that one and that one over there. And uh, got to sell those two to help pay for the side-by-side. -side. So she's heading home with that and I am heading to Michigan. And I'm uh, pretty excited about this upcoming Michigan bear hunt. So thanks for riding shotgun with me. It's going to be fun. just like I left it two months ago. So that is a boneless beaver I put in there. It's had all of the bones trimmed out of it, just the skin with the, the meat rolled up in it. Tomorrow I'll bring some more bait in here and uh, scent this up and bait it a little more, but this should be good enough uh, to get things going here for today. This is real swampy down in here. This whole area is real dark, it's quiet, swampy. You know, just what I'm looking for. There's actually water right behind me here. Real slow, slow moving stream. I got a stand tree 18 yards that way. This is going to be good, I'm telling you. It's going to be good. Let's get her done. I got camp set up here. I'll show you around a little bit. 
here is the trailer and my spot I got set up for looking at videos and editing and looking at trail camera pictures and then here's the tent got my charger there I can run my computer on that or um, charge my phone at night and so forth nice comfy camp in here 10.30 a.m. on day two, and I have got two of the baits checked so far, the two that I put out yesterday. Each of those two, I gave a new shot of Northwood Spray, put a little more bait in there. I didn't have any activity on any of them, although one of the logs on the second one looked... It might have been moved. I, I, I pulled the card, so I'll find out. And, uh, on the trail camera. So I am uh, headed to Troy's property and I'm going to walk back in there. He said you can, it's about 200 yard walk, carry a bucket and a camera, put, get it set up and um, it hasn't been hit, he said, for two days after his wife shot the bear in there. So, set up just in case a bear comes back. He said he had multiple bears in there, sent me pictures of quite a few bears of uh, all different sizes and uh, it seems like a good spot. He sent me a pin. It's right by a beaver pond and uh, it just really looks good and we'll see when we get in there. Ran into a group of guys that were hunting with an outfitter. They said this outfitter had 15 hunters for the first week and only three people left with a bear out of 15. And the outfitter was blaming the abundance of natural foods, which, I mean, there is an abundance of natural foods, but, wow, that's horrible. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say about that. I don't know anything about the outfitter, so I won't say anything I guess but that was kind of a shock to me to hear that it's been that bad back in there to this bait on Troy's property here and it's been hit that both buckets of uh, pastries that I put out yesterday are gone and uh, I, I'll check the camera pictures but it's a really cool spot back in there it's kind of not really what I set out to do when I came to Michigan is hunt a bait on someone's private property but yeah we'll see how this plays out I guess Anyway, I just wanted to show you this cabin here. It's pretty cool. It's an old broken down cabin on the trail. It's a 300 yard trail that goes back in to, to Troy's Bait here. Huffing and puffing from carrying buckets. So that's the first one and we've got a hit. So we'll, we got two more to check. Well, that was really discouraging. I just got done looking at the trail camera pictures and uh, I didn't think either of the two baits that I put out Sunday afternoon had been hit. Well, it turns out one of them's just got a great big, really fat raccoon on it. But the bait up at Troy's place 
unfortunately was just swarmed by raccoons all night and I was really surprised that there's not a bear on camera. It's cr incredible <laughs> but apparently all those raccoons ate two full buckets of pastries in one night. So um, don't really have a place to hunt again tonight. I wanted to before I go here talk a little bit about the competition that I'm seeing in the amount of other people in the woods. I am seeing quite a bit of sign of other people baiting and also there's fresh tire tracks uh, in these forest roads each day so I know that the dog hunters are rigging them, uh, driving them and so forth. The bait at Troy's place, I can see where somebody's going back in with a four-wheeler and baiting uh, pretty close. I mean it's probably within a few hundred yards of Troy's bait. Um, also was just driving along the highway um, getting ready to turn off on a two-track road and uh, saw a guy stop along the road and get a bucket out of the back of his pickup and walk off into the woods so he's obviously a bear baiter there's other places where I'm just seeing pickups parked alongside the road uh, they could be baiting or they could be forest workers or loggers or something like that but um, at any rate there's I'm seeing a lot of signs that there are other people uh, baiting and hunting near me. You know, we're not going to give up on this. I've got two baits in really good spots and also got Troy's bait which has, uh, you know, had multiple bears on it all season pretty much except after uh, they shot that one bear in there and just completely died but uh, it seems like it should be able to get going again. At any rate I wish I had more good news for you but we're not going to give up on this and uh, we're going to just assume that we're going to be a lot more optimistic when the next video starts. We'll see you soon. sitting here on the banks of Lake Gogebic waiting for the sun to come up gotta wait a couple hours before I go check baits this morning it's Tuesday day three <clears throat> I guess day three I don't know it's actually second full day but uh, we're gonna hopefully have some bears on the baits today the weather forecast really sucks um, we got rain coming, got frost coming. <laughs> After I check the camera today, I will have a lot better idea of what the uh, rest of my week is going to look like. Well, I'm driving again. I... Okay, first of all, I went up there to Troy's place. He's got to be 300 yards behind his cabin. And I walked back in there. It looks really good. Uh, the barrel was tipped over, so apparently a bear had been there. Um, he's back downstate, so uh, no cameras or anything on it, but I went ahead and put a camera on it, put some more bait out there, and then headed back, got back to camp, found out my truck had a flat tire. So I put a can of Fix-A-Flat in it, enough to get me to the nearest tire repair place, which was 30 minutes the other direction. So I don't have any place to hunt yet tonight, which is... Pretty much as expected but we're gonna go ahead and check everything again in the morning and uh, hopefully I'll have some trail camera pictures to show you. Okay 
here comes the moment of truth. On a three baits, one was hit for the first time, and it was hit pretty good. I'm going to look at that card first. Pretty excited about this because if it's a shoot a bear, I'm going to go hunt them. I'm going to hang a stand and hunt. No pictures. You got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Unreal. Okay, on Troy's bed I have 114 photos of raccoons again. Unbelievable. That that camera failed again. And on the first bait I got multiple pictures of that great big raccoon again. Okay, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I just left the bait again. This has gotten to be a total cluster. Okay, so I decided my plan was to get some cell cameras and replace, not replace, but add them to the cameras that are already in there. I'm just going to stop on top of this hill for a second. So I spent the two and a half hours uh, in the middle part of the day today uh, driving to the nearest Walmart getting a Tacticam reveal actually bought three of them and then uh, when I got back to camp I got it set up and grabbed the stuff I was going to come out here and hang a stand at this bait that got hit this morning but I don't have any pictures so I don't know what's on it. I don't know if it was a nocturnal bear. I don't know if it was a yearling. I don't know if it was a sow with cubs. I don't know. Um, you know, we become so reliant on, on the tools and the technology that we have available to us today. It makes it so much more effective and efficient. But when they fail, you put you in a lurch. So I came out here uh, pre prepared to hang a stand and hang that uh, Tacticam cell camera and then also I carried two buckets of bait in there. Well I got in there and it looked like the bait had been hit again. So I went ahead and put the camera up and dumped the two buckets of bait just got out of there because you know at 2.30 in the afternoon if I go in there and start clanking around with a stand it's very possible that I spooked that bear off the bait. I'm not going to know until I get back to camp and look at the cards um, hoping that the camera worked this time so I guess I'm not gonna hunt tonight and I really was excited about actually getting in a stand for the first time but as tough as this is I got one opportunity probably and I don't want to blow it so I'm not gonna go in there and hunt until everything is right and that's just not right now so I'm going back to camp I am going to look at the trail camera picture and hope that I got some photos of the bear. If not, it'll be morning before I know what kind of bear is on the bait or if it's a you know big one, small one, sow with cubs, whatever. What a zoo. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, well if I get one of these bears it'll all be worth it. But what a zoo. Going to the venison stew this morning. It'll feel really good to get something hot in me. I'm telling you, it is hard 
to crawl out of a warm sleeping bag when it's in the 30s. We gotta get out and check these baits. I got these three baits out there, and uh, I'll wait till about nine, and I'll go out and um, make a decision after I check them. So far, all we got is some Boone and Crockett coons on the baits, and this is the third check. So we need something to happen pretty quick. But maybe today's the day. We'll go get them. Well, quite a bit has changed here. I've got two bears on baits now, two different bears, two different baits. Um, I guess I've got a bit of a dilemma. And it's not which bear to shoot, it's a little different than that. But let me start by telling you about Troy's bait. Um, he had multiple bears coming in there. It's a great bait on private land and uh, his wife shot a bear in there last Friday. So that was seven days ago and the bait has not been hit again by bears. It's been swarmed by raccoons every night. Unfortunately the bears have not been back and there's another guy baiting. I can see where his four-wheeler trail goes back in there. It's got to be I mean, he's got to be within two, three hundred yards of this bait. So I've been walking the three hundred yards back in there every day, checking the camera. Well, this morning I hung a cell camera in there. There's good AT&T service in there. But I'm just really surprised that that bait died like it did. Okay, so the camera is still not working um, on the bait that got hit yesterday. I went in there, messed around with some things. I hung a cell camera in there. So I did get pictures of the bear that is in there. And even though I don't have cell service in there, um, this camera did take pictures. When I went in and checked it today, I got a lot of pictures, like 170 pictures of a small bear. Um, I don't even think it's a legal bear because here in Michigan they got to be 42 inches and I doubt if this one would qualify for that. And that bear just came in about 9.30 last night and spent the entire night there. Left at 7.30 this morning. I mean he slept on the logs. He just spent the whole night there. Uh, but it's not a shooter. So unfortunately um, I can rule that out unless a bigger bear comes to that bait. So the good news is that the other bait is had not been hit at all until I went in there and checked it this morning and uh, and there was a pretty decent sow on that bait and uh, she was there at 9.30 last night Some really obnoxious dog over there she was there and found the bait at 9.30 last night she took the beaver and then came back a few minutes later and started eating at the bait and then uh, she was back again between 1.30 and 2. So that is the dilemma that I have, is we've got a pretty decent sow. Um, and I would say I could go in there and hang and hunt, and there's a reasonable expectation that that bear would be back before dark tonight. The question is, is that the bear that I want to burn six points in Michigan on? So it's the fifth day right now, and she's the only prospect I've got at this point. Could get better. Once the baits get hit, a lot of times they blow up pretty good in the next few days. But it's the fifth day. So that's the dilemma that I have, is do I go in there and try to shoot her? And unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till the next video to find out. Because I haven't made my decision yet, and uh, I'll make my decision by... 1 o'clock today and uh, it's about 11.30 now, so we'll see you on the next video. Sorry to leave you hanging like I did in that last video, but I really hadn't decided what to do. And uh, I've been looking through these pictures of this bear that I have on the bait here, and uh, 
It's a probably a three-year-old sow. I'm going to say it's probably 180 pounds. She's pretty fat and you know a good eating bear for sure. And uh, six points to draw this tag makes me, you know, a little bit concerned that I would go ahead and shoot this bear if I have a chance when the potential for getting something bigger is out there. It is the fifth day and I could always come back later in the season or whatever. So I do have options but I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go out and hang and hunt this afternoon and try to shoot this bear. And of course there's always the off chance that another bear could come you know that's a bit of a long shot but you just never know um, she was in there twice last night about five hours apart so there's a pretty good chance she'll be back before dark tonight I would say and whenever she wasn't there then Booner the Cooner was in there but I think I'm gonna go put a tree stand up this afternoon and get in it and if I see her and change my mind I can always decide not to shoot her at that point so but I'm here to hunt and I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to get her so we'll see what happens and it turned into just a beautiful day here a little breezy but it's almost 70 degrees and the sun's out it's in in the five days I've been here I've had nothing like this so it's a perfect day to go bear hunting it's one o'clock right now I got about 15 more minutes left on charging some camera batteries um, and then I'm gonna head out to the stand my plan is to go in and hang the stand and then come back to the truck and the stands about a hundred yards from where I parked the truck come back to the truck and uh, then change clothes and then go back in to hunt so I'm hopefully gonna be settled in to hunt by between 2 and 2 30 which makes for a long day because it doesn't get dark until it's just about I think it's 8 45 or something but that bear could come back anytime so I'm gonna be ready for it when it does minimize noise and and disturbance in here because the swamp is right here I mean like that bear is probably within a hundred yards right now so I wanted to be really quiet getting all set up in here the, according to the trail cameras the bear came from that direction there which is where the open water is and then this all is just swampy behind me here but I can't see any open water anyway wind is really swirly in here but that's pretty typical of these uh, thick cover spots so I can't see much around me that when that bear steps out it's going to be right in my lap but that's you know why I chose this spot because they'll feel comfortable coming to it during the daylight so we got a long sit here it's about 2 30 we got until about I think 8 45 or something it's it's a long time but it might not take that long that bear I'm pretty certain it's gonna come back um, that's just the pattern that I've seen over and over over the years is once these bears find a bait they visit it a couple of times and then they come back every eight hours or so for a couple of days until they just settle into a evening or a nocturnal rhythm and hopefully if we don't get her tonight it'll be a evening rhythm rather than nocturnal 's good to be in the stand after several days of working these and checking cameras and hauling bait and feels really really good to be in the stand with a high degree of optimism so 
You're riding shotgun. Thanks for being along. This could be good. I just got this text from Colby Moorhead. Barry shot in Arkansas. Pretty nice. He's the owner of Bear Hunting Magazine. Good friend. Really good guy. Do it yourself hunt in Arkansas. That's a tough hunt. Maybe I'll go try it sometime. Anybody know what kind of a tree this is? I think it might be some kind of a fir. Leave a comment below if you know what kind of a tree this is. Yeah, I haven't seen any of these in Minnesota. We might have them, but I just I don't recognize them. Well, not tonight, I guess. Kind of surprised really surprised actually that she didn't come back while I was there I just when I climbed down right at dark I just had a sense that she's very close but I guess we'll see on the cameras what happens I might have blown my only chance at her I guess we'll see well day six here it's really raining and uh, I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning in the tent and for some reason I had a really stuffed up head and kind of achy joints and uh, was laying there trying to decide what to do and thinking, you know, I don't have much going here. Um, it's supposed to rain today and uh, archery season for deer opens tomorrow at home. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should just go home for a few days and then come back. And if I do, should I leave some cameras out? Um, should I wait a couple weeks and come back? Um, and I'm laying there thinking, well, I guess I better look at the radar to see if, uh, you know, if that's going to affect my decision. Well, I look at the phone and I see there's major rain just coming right at me in the campground there. So I pile out of the sleeping bag and um, Put on a headlight and just scrambling around in the dark breaking camp and got everything tore down and it just started to pour just as soon as i was folding up the tent so i dodged a bullet there but uh, i've decided to just go ahead and pull everything out of the woods here and i got to do it in the rain because it's it's an all day steady rain here it looks like but um, go home today and i'll be home for deer season opener tomorrow and then uh I'm not going to give up on this. There's, you know, it took me six years to draw this tag. So I'm going to kind of keep an eye on things out here. Plus, I got Troy here that has his camp up here. I'm still surprised that no bears have come back to his bait. So um, this is probably not the last Michigan vlog, but for today, I got all these cameras in the woods I got to pull out and I got to get my stand down from last night and then I'm gonna head home. Hold up, another change of plans. Okay, I am on my way home, but I got to the second bait and it was completely cleaned out. And that's the one where the camera wasn't working. But I actually had taken the camera and shut it off, took out the batteries, put the batteries back in, turned the camera back on and Put a new card in it and formatted the card and it had taken some pictures but it was pouring down rain so i didn't take the time to look at them and i went to the other bait where that sow was and uh, it was also hit again so i just decided not to take everything out and take it home with me i left the stand up i left the camera there i put a couple more big buckets full of bait in there and um, so I'm, I'm going to go back in a few days. And I, I really think that other bait must have had a second bear on it because I don't think that little cubster could eat all that bait. So um, I, it was just pouring rain, so I just threw all the cameras in the back of the pickup and everything. I'll check them when I get home. I guess if there's nothing else on that camera, I'll just delete this part of the video and you'll never see it. But if there is, you're looking at it right now. So, this is the end of this video, but there's definitely going to be another one because I left my stand and, and uh, 
I rebated, so I'm going to head back there in a few days. I just got a lot of stuff to do at home, and I uh, wanted to hunt the opening day of the deer season for bow, and I mean, I got hundreds of video clips I got to organize and edit and uh, get them on YouTube for you, so we'll see you in the next video. in Minnesota but I'm heading out here shortly um, I'm gonna leave that trailer with the four-wheeler in it uh, I didn't end up using the wheeler and so I'm just gonna I got my coolers and some stuff in this little trailer here and I'm loaded up and ready to go I just been home for a couple of days I had some things to do here and uh, um, you know get some videos out and stuff like that so I'm heading back out there. I'm actually just going to stay in a motel instead of camp, and I'm probably going to try to hunt three, four more days. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, now that I got bears hitting the baits, it could happen pretty fast. I might actually uh, be able to hunt this afternoon even. It's four and a half hours, so by the time I get out there and run the baits, maybe it be like two, three o'clock, and uh, I might still be able to get in the stand this afternoon. So I do want to mention one thing that uh, I have neglected to mention on um, on these videos. Um, it's an apology of sorts, I guess, and, and that is um, that when bear hunting season starts, I just start getting flooded with questions and comments. And uh, they're on the YouTube channel, they're on Facebook, they're emails and texts and so forth and people are asking me uh, specific questions about their bear hunting about you know things that they're they're struggling with nocturnal bears i got a sow with cubs that took over my bait i you know i can't figure this out or whatever and uh, i just feel terrible but i just have to ignore them because there's so many of them you know just dozens sometimes you know eight ten a day and I just don't have time to deal with them all. And the other issue is that almost all of the questions that are asked have been um, answered on YouTube videos. And so um, if you're struggling with something, there's a lot of videos on this channel about how to hunt bears and uh, the basically troubleshooting, I guess you might say. And if you are one of the people who have contacted me and I just have not answered your questions, I'm sorry, but... Um, between running baits and checking cameras and guiding and um, producing videos and stuff like that, I just don't have time. There's just, it, there's just way too many of them. And so I, I want to apologize for that. But anyway, um, I am ready to hit the road. I just need a little green caffeine. 
and uh, it's time to head to Michigan. Well, I'm back at the truck here after doing a third bait, and uh, it's about four o'clock. I really was hoping to get in a stand tonight and hunt, but a couple things changed that. Number one, the bait that I think I'm going to end up hunting doesn't have a stand on it, and the only one that does probably isn't the best prospect. So, plus it's uh, about four o'clock and uh, by the time I I'm really sweaty so by the time I got back the motel got changed I mean I wouldn't be able to be in the stand till about six which ain't the end of the world but it's not optimal and with only three baits I pretty much have to make sure that when I do hunt I'm not screwing something up so uh, I guess I'm not gonna hunt tonight the good part of the, all this is that all three baits were hit and this one that I just finished, number three here, um, completely cleaned out. I mean, not one single sunflower seed was left. The logs were strewn everywhere and there was three bears on this bait. And so, um, unfortunately, I don't know how long it was, how long ago it was cleaned out and I pulled the camera off of it because I was thinking I was going to um, pull everything out when I went home and then reset when I came back and then changed my mind, as you saw in the last video. So this one does not have a camera on it, um, but it's got a big hog of a bear on it and uh, then a little one and then a pretty decent one. So we'll find out tomorrow because I put a camera on it now. Troy's bait was hit and that was nice to see for the first time finally that some bear had come back after, you know, over a week uh, since um, Troy's wife shot the bear in there. The first bait that I checked has a second bear on it, but it's also a nocturnal bear. Uh, there's no daylight pictures of bears in there, and there's more raccoons. Old Booner Cooner brought his girlfriends, it looks like, so uh, there's more of those. And then... Uh, there's also something nobody ever wants to see on a bear bait, and that is somebody's hound. And uh, it looks to me like it's a bear dog that uh, maybe they ran a bear off my bait. And I guess I won't know until we start, um, you know, checking cameras more regularly here. And that a cell camera should work in there because I got two bars of service on my phone, but then when I put a cell camera in there, it, it can't connect to service. So I don't know what's going on there, but... Um, yeah, I just have a regular camera, which means I got to walk in there and check it. But anyway, that's today's update and I'm going to, uh, go ahead and, um, head back to the motel and, uh, unfortunately just not hunt tonight, but there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be hanging a stand and hunting tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, things are definitely a lot more optimistic than they were a few days ago so we got a total of a minimum of six bears on the baits right now and uh, so tomorrow we'll tell the story of when they're coming and what we've got and then i'll make a decision on which ones to target well this is this is the day. Got a super good feeling about the season. In fact, would you like the good news or the bad news first? I'll give you the good news first. And the good news is that there ain't no bad news. I've got two different options. They're both pretty good options. And I decided to hunt here at Troy's tonight. I've got a there's three bears on camera during the night last night. One of them was here 45 minutes before dark. The bait 
that I'm calling bait number one where I had the dog on it well I got to talking to Mike um, the outfitter and owner of the motel that I'm staying at and he said he's pretty certain that that dog was a dog that they were using to track a wounded bear that morning so a local guy that owns property in there was hunting in there shot a bear and they went back the next morning and they they saw my bait when the dog went through that area looking for the bear and apparently this guy's got a bait about 300 yards from my bait you know i had talked about how these bears go on this specific pattern when they first find a bait and uh, this bear that i was hunting deviated from that pattern uh, didn't show up when i thought it would and uh, now i know why it's because there's another bait only 300 yards away and that pretty much throws a monkey wrench in that whole pattern so anyway that there's two bears on that bait one of them was there during the night last night that big sow again so i don't have any daylight pictures of bears on that bait so i i ruled that one out uh, bait number two is one that uh, was completely lit clean i mean everything was gone when I got there yesterday. That's the one that had the camera that wasn't working on it. Well, it's got a camera that's working on it now. I checked it this morning. Had a pretty nice bear in there at five o'clock last night. And I was in there about four, or got out of there about four anyway. Really thought about putting a stand in there. Um, and I just thought, you know what, at four o'clock, I don't want to be clanking around in there. If there's any bears, they're in the swamp, they're very close. And so I just decided not to hunt there last night or not to hang that stand. And I'm really glad I didn't because um, I'm certain that that bear was very close. And she ended up coming in about 5 o'clock. So about a little over an hour after I left. Basically, it's nice to have options, you know. And I got two options, two good options. And I just decided to go ahead and hunt here at uh, Troy's. Um, it's really easy to set up. I went in here and set up after I baited this morning I'll show you a short clip of that okay the bear the bears have torn up this ground blind pretty bad but there's a good chair here so I screwed it to that tree right there and I'm about 20 yards from the bait and I can just sit right here and shoot right over this I got it propped up here so they're used to seeing it laying here and I'll be able to uh, hopefully stay hunkered down and then rise up and shoot when I have a shot. So it's 300 yard walk back in there and I'm concerned that it's going to be a little dicey with the wind. Um, I guess I won't know until I get back in there but uh, I think we'll be all right. And I'm taking as much scent control precaution as I can to minimize my scent and that'll help. And we'll just have to see which direction the bear comes from and what the wind is like when we get in there. But uh, I love going to the stand in beautiful weather. It's a great afternoon to spend in the woods. And I'm going to be in there for a long time because it's only 2.30 right now. But it's going to be a long haul. But it should be comfortable and uh, just a, a nice day to spend sitting in the woods. The blind's a little bit high. I need to get it down just a couple inches or get this chair up a couple inches one or the other. 22 yards to the barrel. I like it. I don't like the wind. It's just kind of sketchy. It's kind of going like this back and forth. So the trail camera shows that the bear has been committing to the bait from that direction. Now that doesn't mean he comes in from that direction. He could do a half circle or whatever, which is pretty typical. If he comes from that direction, it, it's really dicey. If he just comes from that direction and comes right into the bait, I'll probably be all right. But it's just swirling back and forth a little bit not not in love with it but um i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna i'm gonna roll with it well this wind is pretty steady out of the southeast now so if a bear comes from the northwest i'm gonna get busted but just looking at the lay of the land i'm thinking that they're 
going to come most likely from the east. That's what I'm hoping for. It's 6.15, so I've been here for three hours. I've got a little over two more to go. I had some crows land on the bait. That's, I would say that's the true test of if you're being still and quiet enough, if you get crows to land on the bait while you're there. Well, I got out about 15 minutes before the end of legal shooting light because it was so dark in there. I couldn't see anything on the screen video camera and I uh, can see my pins but I just don't think I could have made an ethical shot. It's really heavy overhead cover in there. I walked out into the open areas and I was able to walk all the way back to the truck without a light but uh, it was really dark in there and I don't know, it just didn't happen tonight. I, I don't know, really, really felt confident going in but I guess we'll try again tomorrow. just a beautiful day here in the Yuke and it's about noon on day actually I have no idea what day it is but it's getting kind of long anyway as you saw in the last video I uh, hunted at Troy's last night and the bears that were at that bait did not come back and which was a surprise to me I went in there with a lot of optimism uh, there had been a pretty decent bear that was in there just before dark for a couple of days and so I felt pretty good about that so all three baits were hit last night I just got done running the baits and uh, checking the cards and uh, the, I've got a cell cam on uh, Troy's bait but then the other two baits I don't have cell service so I don't have cell cams on them and I got to go in there and check them every day which is fine because uh, I, I like to uh, make sure there's plenty of bait in there uh, when I'm away from home it's like I'm hunting pretty aggressively like I'm actually you know I'm baiting every day checking the cards every day and just try to make a decision what's the best possible place to hunt that evening every night right now that's the point I'm at in this endeavor so what happened at Troy's bait last night was that the wind really never laid down and I feel like that had something to do with it but when I checked to sell camera this morning I got up and started looking at the pictures and there was yet another new bear that was in there last night like two o'clock in the morning he was there for about an hour and he's a big one really good one that's a bear that I haven't seen before so could that bear come back tonight before dark yeah that's a fairly good possibility so that's one good option so the other two baits bait number one uh, had a bear there at four o'clock in the afternoon and it was a small bear that was there for a while and then a bigger bear came in after dark and then the small bear came back in the wee hours of the morning that bear there's a high percentage chance that that bear is going to be at that bait before dark tonight but he's just a yearling and I I don't think I'm ready to shoot a hundred pound or 120 pound bear yet in this hunt even though I'm I feel like I'm running out of time so that's an option that I could you know at any time I could jump in there because I already got a stand, everything's in there. The tree's ready to just climb in and hunt. So bait number two is the one that I thought really seriously about hunting last night. I had a bear on that bait 
just at last light and honestly don't know if I would have been able to get a shot at that bear or not. It was just when it was almost too dark, um, like right at the end of legal shooting light is when that bear came in and I got to get this, I got to go in there and move this camera because um, it's the bear's spending all its time just to the right side of the bait and all I'm getting is its head when it pokes its head into the picture so I gotta get that camera moved in there but it looked like a really nice bear and uh, it was there just for a little while and ate very little when I went in there I could tell that the bait was not hardly hit at all as opposed to the bait at the number one where that little bear was in and then the sow came back that that was pretty blown up I'm gonna go hunt and I feel like my odds of getting a good bear at Troy's is better than any of the other baits right now. And I, I think if I just wanted to go shoot a bear, a small bear, I think that yearling at uh, bait number one is very killable. Uh, I talked to Mike a little bit last night after I got back. Uh, Mike is the owner of the Berglund Outfitters and the mo he's also the owner of the motel that I'm staying at. I had brought up the issue that I felt like there's a lot of bear hunters around here and that uh, I feel like I have other baits very close to my baits and I'm, uh, I'm certain that's true with two of them and the third one I don't know but I suspect that there are other baits that are within a mile or so of it and he said that it's gotten a lot worse in the last years. He said 10 years ago you could drive back on most of these forest roads anytime, anywhere. And then the Forest Service just started gating them off. And there, there's a lot of gates on a lot of roads up and down these areas where typically, you know, in, in most places you'd be able to just go back in there and bait. But unfortunately they're, they're gated off and he said what that's done is it has pushed everybody out to the roads and people are a lot more crowded than they used to be because they can't access some of these areas that are back off the main forest roads. It's warm and sunny. In fact, it's just downright hot. It's got to be close to 80 degrees, it feels like. But I'm in here for the long haul. I figure I might as well be sitting here as sitting in a motel room. Got to be sitting somewhere. The wind may be a little better tonight, at least it's not as windy, it's it's a light wind, a little steadier, not as swirly, um, a little bit more east to it, so I like it, I like it a lot better. We've got four bears on this bait in the last few days, and the biggest one just showed up during the night last night, so my hope is that he comes back before dark tonight. I don't know if he just found this bait or if he's been here before. If he just found it, it's pretty likely that he'll be back tonight. The other issue is somebody else has got a bait just a few hundred yards from here. It's hot. And I hope that I'll be able to pull my camouflage on, which is sprayed down with scent killer so that'll contain my scent a little better hopefully fend off the mosquitoes a little better but it's probably going to be at least a couple hours before I'm ready to pull that jacket on all right everybody on the count of three for good luck hit the like button on three one two three all right everybody hit the like button all at once like that might just work it's a beautiful day to be in the woods those are the kind of days when you see the most bears, so maybe tonight's the night. Here we go. It's 5.30, so I've been here two and a half hours. And you can just forget all those nice things I said about the wind. 
it has literally come from every point of the compass in the last couple of hours. It's finally starting to die down a little bit, it feels like. It's a long haul sitting here this many hours, but it's a really pleasant spot and a comfortable chair. And I'm in the woods. Can't complain. Now this coming on here, telling you I didn't see anything, it's going to be a bad habit. It sure ain't much fun, but it happened again. Man, it calmed down really nice that last hour. It just felt right. Everything seemed good. And, uh, but it just didn't happen. So I'm running out of time here. I got uh, a couple more days. And then uh, Mike has got more hunters coming in, so the motel's going to fill up. And uh, I'm on, running out of clean underwear, so I gotta probably got one or two more nights, and then uh, we're gonna have to bag this thing. But anyway, we'll run the cameras again in the morning, check the baits, and see what we got. Uh, I'm gonna stay at least one more, I'm sure. I have walked past this pond two dozen times going back into Troy's bait and every single time I think there's been wood ducks on it. It always sucks to have to pull everything out of a place where you really had high hopes and expectations. Um, but this this bait just died, and I don't really fully understand what's going on here, honestly. And uh, um, we've had multiple bears that have come in here once or twice and then just never come back. It's got good bait. I mean, there's just really no reason for it that I can understand. I know that there's another bait that's pretty close over here, but for some reason, uh, this just didn't pan out. Man, I went through a lot of bait here considering the fact that I never saw a bear when I was hunting. But we are pulling out of this one and we're going to check two more uh, the other two I'm going to check the cards on them and then make a decision if I'm just going to go home or if I'm going to keep hunting um, and if I do go home I'll definitely come back there's uh, you know it took me six years to draw this tag I'm not going to give up that easy but there's I man this is getting long and I've got a lot to do at home so let's go check the other two Alright, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's been busted wide open. And uh, there's a lot more bait been eaten. Let's have a look. that little bear in here. He was at noon. That little bugger was here. Three o'clock. Got a fisher in here. Man, that fisher's in here a lot. That little bear was in there at 1 o'clock in the morning. This morning again. 
geez, I got dozens of pictures of that fisher. Three o'clock in the morning. That little bugger is basically living here. Six o'clock this morning. Seven o'clock this morning, seven thirty. There at eight o'clock this morning. Uh, it's just that little guy. Oh, well, there's two of them. Oh my gosh, I bumped them. Eight. I know three. So they were in here 14 minutes ago. <sighs> I don't know. So I got two yearlings in here, basically living right here. They're, they're probably really close right now. That bigger bear hasn't been back, and when it came back, it didn't hardly eat anything. So all right, we're done here. I'm gonna pull it. third and final bait. This bait is going to determine if I have a place to hunt tonight or if I go home. Well, it's been worked pretty hard. There's definitely a lot of bait been eaten up and gone. Well, let's look at the camera and see what we got. All right. We got a stuffed up head again this morning. Some kind of mold or something in this country that ever so often really gets to me. Ooh, 517. Oh, is that a big one? No, it's a small one. I think this camera's set on central time too, so that's actually 623 in that picture right there. Well, it sure looks bigger in that picture. Got fishers on every one of these baits. All right, that's uh, midnight. That's a bigger one. Back at four o'clock. So a little bit bigger bear was in here during the night. So there's that little bear in there. So that little guy was in here with plenty of shooting light left last night, but I don't have any daylight pictures of either of the two bigger bears in here. Zero. And they're coming consistently, but I just don't have any pictures of them in the daylight. So I guess that settles it. I'm going to pull my stand out of here and head home. and. Uh, I'm, I might come back in a couple of weeks. I would have had to leave tomorrow anyway because Mike has people coming in for the third season hunt. And uh, his motel would have been full. So I would have had to leave tomorrow anyway. So by leaving now, I'm just leaving a day early. 
but I'm going to come back. Um, you know, the season goes till the end of October, and there's other options. And besides, actually, even besides bait, I could hire somebody to run dogs for me or something and get a bear that way. I've done that before. It's not my favorite way to do it, but it works, and, and uh, it is a different kind of hunting than, than bait hunting. Very different. So I guess this is the end of this vlog, the end of this trip. So uh, I will come back. I'm 90% sure, and uh, thanks for joining me throughout this saga that it's been, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Well, gang, I'm on my way to the Ute for one more try at this, filling this bear tag in Michigan. I'm on the shores of Lake Superior here uh, in Wisconsin, just traveling on my way out to the UP right now. And uh, just decided to get out and stretch a little bit along the beach here. So I got a deal going with Mike, and if you remember and sorry for the traffic noise in the background, but I'm just basically at a rest area here. But so I met Mike and uh, he owns a motel there where I'll be staying. He also is a bear guide, sells bear bait and all kinds of different. He's a pretty serious bear guy. I got to talking to him and he's basically about done with his guiding, but he's got a few uh, baits that are still active and uh, so I kind of worked out a deal with him that I can go out there and hunt some of his baits. I also still have the option of starting up, uh, you know, a couple of my baits or, you know, getting them fired up again too. I've got that option. So I got lots of options and uh, I'm, I just got four or five days here and uh, we're going to see how this goes, but I, I really hate to give up on this tag and so I'm going to uh, really work hard at it here for the next few days and hopefully go ahead and finish out this hunt in Michigan and uh, get this bear tag filled and a bear in the freezer. So thanks for following along. This, uh, uh, this, is, this is it. This is the last hurrah. So let's hope it works. Now folks, it's October and I'm in the tree stand and it's 80 degrees. What a crazy year this has been. It's a strange feeling hunting over someone else's bait. For me, it's been a while and uh, but Mike is seems like he's got he's pretty on the ball. And uh, he doesn't have a camera on this bait, so he doesn't know what's been hitting it. Um, it hasn't been hit. Uh, it's got a stump with a rock, and it's covered up. And it wasn't hit when we came in here, but that doesn't mean, you know, it wouldn't be tonight. Um, the bears are real irregular right now. And he said he's got a lot of nocturnal activity. So anyway, it's a very close shot in here. And uh, we'll see what happens. There's a really, really big one in here and uh, he could show up at any time. Beyond the bait there is a swamp back down in there, a cedar swamp. And the bears are coming from that. And the wind is mostly coming this way. Um, it's pretty swirly in here, but that's pretty typical and it's blowing pretty hard right now So hopefully it settles down some by evening. I can 
talk in a regular voice just because it's blowing so hard it's pretty noisy a lot of background noise so tomorrow morning I'm gonna go ahead and go check Troy's bait probably put a camera on it and then uh, I might go look at the baits that I left a week ago and just see I mean I'm sure they're completely cleaned out and I, I don't know if I could get any information from them because I don't have cameras on them I don't know if it's worth going to check them unless I take some bait and actually put a camera and start baiting them but so it's about 3 30 and uh, it's gonna be a pretty long sit but I'm in a comfortable ladder stand and and I'm in the woods and it's pretty comfortable at 80 degrees with this breeze so I'm just gonna enjoy the afternoon sitting here and maybe even get lucky and shoot a bear who knows Good morning. I did not see a bear last night and uh, I left my trail camera on the bait so I'm gonna go in there this morning and uh, see if anything came after I left and then I'll have some pictures and videos of it if it did. I was thinking I'm just gonna share a couple things with you you know five six hours on stand the guy's got a lot of time to think and uh, I do a lot of that. This later fall bear hunting is pretty different and I've only killed a couple bears in October out of the almost 40 bears that I've shot. And uh, I've noticed some things about it and there's a lot of nocturnal activity. And I'm, I think there's more reasons for that than I really have um, analyzed in the past. There's one thing I thought about last night that I think I thought about for the first time and that is the fact that there is a lot of dry leaves on the ground right now. Um, a lot of the trees have completely lost their leaves and uh, you can't walk quietly which also means that the bears can't walk quietly and bears are accustomed to coming to the bait without making a sound and they just can't do that. You know, there's also the other issues, and I've discussed before with you that, um, you know, the daylight hours are just shorter. So there's more likely to be nocturnal activity. And then there's also um, the fact that a fair amount of the leaves and the bushes have lost their leaves and so forth. That makes it a little more open, which uh, kind of lowers their comfort level coming to the bait. But I really think that this issue with the leaves on the ground and the noise that they have to make when they're moving about actually lowers their comfort and security level when approaching the bait also. We've talked about before how they have to feel secure and comfortable approaching a bait during the daylight and ultimate comfort level of course is dark. It's just coming during the dark. So I just uh, want to share that with you. I think this issue with the crunchy leaves, might there might be more to that than I've really thought about before. But anyway, we are going to head out to this bait and see if anything happened. And uh, we'll talk to you when we get in there. And the bait hasn't been hit. Looks the same as I left it last night. So I'm gonna put my camera out of here and go Look at some other baits. 37 yards. That's a pretty pretty long poke for an archery bear shot. That would be the longest distance I've ever shot a bear at, except for a spot and stock hunt. Most of these baits are set up for rifle hunters and shotgun hunters or whatever. But there is a big bear in here. It's been shot at, it's been shot, just shot through the brisket. 
Um, it's been spooked off this bait by people in the stand, but it keeps coming back. And unfortunately, the trail camera pictures that we have, he's got a Tacticam reveal cell cam in here, and the only pictures it takes is of people walking in to refresh the bait. And they've been baiting it every day, and it's been cleaned up every night. So this bear has been coming back. I just have no idea what time he's coming back. Let me get this moved around here a little bit so I'm not quite so backlit. 423. I got to stand a little later. I went and put a couple of trail cameras out. Uh, one on another bait that we checked today. And I, I just went with Mike today and we checked four baits. This was one of them. And uh, one of them had a pretty big bear on it that he's been getting pictures of every day. And then yesterday and today it hasn't been hit. Or the night before and then last night. Uh, that bear didn't come back. Uh, two of the other ones were completely cleaned out every day, um, but he doesn't have a camera on them. So I went and put a camera on one of them. I also went and put a cell camera up on Troy's, but unfortunately I don't have service in here, so I won't know if a bear comes to that bait during the evening hours tonight until I get back to service. But the, that bait had been worked good. The barrel had been rolled all over the place and a lot of the bait was gone out of the barrel. So they have been hitting it. So we got a lot of baits that are being hit. We just don't know when they're being hit at all. Um, it's probably, Mike thinks it's all nocturnal activity, but you just don't know at any time one of these bears are gonna make a mistake. So that's where we're at here. I'm just getting settled in. The gnats are pretty bad. I haven't had problems with mosquitoes yet, even though it's in the 80s again today and it's really windy. But the gnats were really bad here as I was getting in the stand. 80s today with the south wind and then tomorrow it's supposed to be a high of 70 and then it's really supposed to fall apart with cold north winds and rain and we're gonna have I mean, for all practical purposes, my best hunting nights are tonight and tomorrow night. So, you know, hopefully we can get it done. That's probably going to be the only two nights that I'll hunt. But we'll see. I got good rain gear, and we'll just watch the forecast. And who knows, I might get another night or two. You know, I am not going to be able to see a bear on this bait until it just steps at the bait. There, I have no chance of seeing it coming at all. And uh, it's just going to be right there because this is just basically a tunnel between me and the bait, 40 yards or just under 40 yards. I'm going to have no warning whatsoever, but at least I've got some distance here, so you got a chance to uh, get a shot off, hopefully. This is different than what I'm used to, but I'm up for it. I didn't see anything last night and I'm out this morning I'm gonna run four baits of, uh, of Mike's and uh, he gave me the bait and everything like that so I'm just kind of where they are and um, check cameras um, actually just gonna do three because we got a cell camera on one of them and uh, it that, that bear that's been there every single day just quit coming back three days ago and hasn't been back also 
I pulled the camera on uh, Troy's place just now. I just came out of there. Uh, it it just had coons on it, and uh, it had been hit pretty hard. But uh, um, when I put a camera in there yesterday, then uh, it looked like it was going to be pretty good, but it wasn't. It was uh, just coons. So. I'm going to run these baits, and then probably tonight's my last night, pick one of these stands to hunt, because it's, uh, we got some nasty weather coming in, like, it's, the wind is just howling right now, and it is supposed to lay down in the evening tonight, it's supposed to be a chance of showers off and on today, and then some really nasty weather is supposed to come in, uh, temperature's going to drop, north winds, a lot of sideways rain and stuff like that, so... I think for all practical purposes, uh, wherever they decide to hunt. Tonight is where I'm going to push all my chips into the middle, and this is uh, pretty much all in on this hunt on one last day. And uh, that could even change after I run these baits. be done. This is the main one that I thought I'd probably hunt tonight. Well, just one more bait to check. I've done enough of these that sometimes you just have a sense that when it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. And I'm starting to feel that way, but I'm having a really hard time letting it go right now. Well, alright, I just got done finishing the last bait. And uh, unfortunately, the only bait that was hit is the one that I hunted last night. And uh, that obviously that bear came in well after dark, or could have been right after I left, I don't know. But if I got trail camera pictures of it, I'll show them to you right now while I'm talking. We've had just nocturnal activity here on these four baits of Mike's, and uh, if there's activity at all, and they've just really pretty much died off, so it's just time to put this tractor in the barn, I guess. I don't know what else to say. I hate to give it up because I put so much time and energy into it, but I had a lot of fun. I saw a lot of cool country, and uh, just I, overall, you know, it was a real positive experience hunting in a new area and uh, met some cool people and uh, had a, just had a, a, an overall good time. Had a couple of fairly close calls. I zigged when I should have zagged a couple times, but unfortunately, I guess I'm gonna make tag sandwich out of this Michigan tag, so. Anyway, I'm really grateful that you followed along, and I wish I had a dead bear at the end of this video to show you. I'm disappointed that I don't have that to show you. I hope you enjoyed this. Anyway, there was just a lot of uh, interesting parts to it, and like I said, a lot of cool country, and and just a lot of new things and every time I do this I learn something so I hope you did too. Thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you on the next video.